I'm your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger, and this is Science Bites, where we bring you a nugget of knowledge in nine minutes or less. Why? Because here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science, we believe science is for everyone. And all you've got to do is take a bite. How much does a cloud weigh? Kind of seems like a trick question, doesn't it? Well, perhaps a little more structure to the question might make it a bit less rhetorical. First, let's nail down one specific type of cloud that we want to weigh. So technically, according to meteorologists, there are more than 100 variations of clouds. However, these can be narrowed down to 10 basic types based on their shape and altitude. Below 6,500 feet, you have cumulus, stratus, and stratocumulus. From 6,500 feet to 20,000 feet, you have altocumulus, nimbostratus, and altostratus. Above 20,000 feet, you have cirrus, cirrocumulus, and cirrostratus. So those are nine of the basic types, but the 10th basic type is cumulonimbus. These honkers tower through all three levels. They are the clouds that create thunderstorms. So I asked Dr. Carolyn Sumners, our curator of astronomy, for her take on the question. As an astronomer, she knows a thing or two about planetary atmospheres. Her answer is hilariously blunt and exactly what you might expect from a dedicated scientist. Well, if the cloud is a cloud, which means the cloud is up in the sky, not raining, but it's hanging up there, then it's got to have a density, one would think, that is less than the density of the air. So it's lighter than air. Did you catch that? It kind of caught me off guard to tell you the truth because it's of course technically correct. If it's not fog resting on the ground, then it is a typical cloud suspended in the air and therefore is buoyant, meaning that it is lighter than the air around it, just like a rubber ducky floating on top of bath water. The ducky is less dense than the water around it of the same volume. Thus, a cloud suspended in the sky is lighter than the air around it of the same volume. Archimedes has done it again. But that doesn't mean the rubber ducky, or cloud in our case, doesn't have mass. So I asked Carolyn a follow-up question and got yet another, no duh, technically correct answer. What if you condensed all the water molecules together into one dense mass? It rains. That's true. Yep, it rains. Of course, the whole water cycle thing. If water vapor condenses into a cloud and that cloud gets squeezed like a sponge by the cooler air around it, yes, we get precipitation or condensation. But doggone it, theoretically speaking, if we could measure a cloud's total mass with a giant scale, how much would it weigh? Let's take a light, fluffy, cumulus cloud. The common clouds you see on a nice day outside. That one looks like a cat. Ooh, that one looks like a rabbit. Oh, that one looks like a perfect one kilometer by one kilometer by one kilometer cube. How meta? Because the average one kilometer by one kilometer by one kilometer cumulus cloud weighs about 1.1 billion pounds, give or take, or 550,000 US tons, give or take. For some perspective, that's as heavy as the Empire State Building with the blue whale on the observation deck looking at one of those telescope thingies. Give or take with their adolescent calves destroying the gift shop. So, clouds are very, very heavy. But what if they fall on us? Do you have enough home insurance to cover falling cloud damage? Yep, because it's just called fog. Now, you might be thinking, how on earth could a cloud of water vapor weigh less than the dry air around it? Excellent question. In fact, the cloud weighs about half as much as the dry air around it. How can that be? Well, air has mass too, and it sinks to the Earth's surface. Clouds sit on top of this heavy layer of air, just like oil sits on top of water. The oil is lighter than the denser water beneath it, and the cloud is lighter than the dense air beneath it as well. You know, all this talk about weight reminds me of a quote from my favorite movie. What do you think about that, Marty McFly? Whoa, this is heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? What? 
You've been listening to Science Bites, a podcast from the Houston Museum of Natural Science with today's host, Johnny Hemberger. Make sure you're subscribed and share with your friends so you don't miss each new fun episode. But as always, thanks for listening and stay curious.